Hey everybody, happy Saturday. Welcome back to the channel for another video today. I have a few things that I wanted to hop on here and chat with you guys about today. Um, so I got a little list, a mental note of all the things I wanna talk about. So without further ado, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right on into it. If you're new here, hi, I'm Brittany, and I have lost 85 pounds on Manjaro, Zepbound, Terzepatide, um, over the course of the past almost two years. I cannot believe it's been almost two years. I'm actually going to be filming a video soon on like two years on Manjaro and what I've learned and what's happened and how that process unfolded. So that's actually one of the, one of the ones that's in the works that I'm planning. Um, so yeah, I just cannot believe that it has been almost two years since I started this process. So anyway, um, I would love to have you subscribe, check the, um, description down below for a playlist of all of my different Manjaro videos from the very beginning and, um, all the way up till now. It's actually fun. I was looking recently at, um, like my first video that I ever posted and just to see the difference, like in my face from that video to now is absolutely insane. So Going off my ramble here, let's get back on topic, Brittany. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is actually my medicine. So I received my medicine yesterday and a lot of people were asking me to kind of show what it looked like when it got here and what the bud dates were and all of that. Um, so I ordered this on October the 3rd. So that was the day that um, like all hell broke loose and people were mass ordering and all of that because that is when um terzeptide was first removed from the fda shortage list like when this whole thing started um was october 2nd so october the 3rd everybody was ordering and i placed my order on that day with orderly meds they um allow you to purchase two months at a time at this point they're working on like three to five months and they've got lots of cool like starter deals going on right now you can buy two get one free etc i got a link down below if you want to check that out um to orderly but i love them so much and they were really good about allowing everybody to do early check-in um so I checked in then and I just received my medicine yesterday, which would have been October 18th. So it took over two weeks, which is the longest it has ever taken. Um, and I did receive two vials. I'm gonna make sure I get the right ones because I actually have three unopened vials right now uh, because I, I don't know, I just do. I order like when they allow me to order, you know, like when it allows me to check in, I check in. So this one has a bud date. Okay, so this is the old one. And this one's bud date, this fill was 9-12 and its bud date is December 11th. So this is obviously the one that I'm going to be using next. And then I currently am on one as well. Like I have three, like I said, three full ones. And then this one that's like half full and its bud date is 11-27. So I'm, I'm right in line. Like this will be, well, I probably, I don't know, two doses left in that one. Um, and then I'll go onto this one. But the new ones that I got, yesterday looked like this and a lot of people were worried that they were like um they were gonna have fill dates of earlier like of the end of september or whatever and then go out um in the end of december and then they wouldn't have time to use it all if they ordered to so a lot of you were asking me to share that information when it came so my fill date the date that this terzepatide was compounded was um october 14th on both of them Yep, made October 14th. It has a lot number and all of that. And then the bud date on both of them is January 12th, which is perfect. So obviously these will be number three and four that I use in line. Um, now they are going to be offering you to be able to buy like three to five vials pretty soon. That's in the works. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with that because I, I do wanna make sure I'm not wasting any medicine. Like I, I need to use this obviously before um, I, I worry about more. Um, so if I did that, it would probably be like the latest I possibly could still order that 
and get in the 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 longer bud dates to hopefully like make it go longer or whatever but i'm not worried at this point i'm really not i i think that we're moving in the right direction that's actually what i wanted to talk about next um but before we switch to that topic i also wanted to show that they did actually send me an entire little bag of syringes this time usually i get this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten syringes usually you get like four ish actually usually you get like six so this might be less than normal. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Um, but yeah, I got this whole bag of ten um, syringes. So why do syringes expire? Anybody know? Let me know. Okay. So next topic of discussion is the FDA. Now the FDA, as you guys know, they sort of issued that little um, memo where they were saying that they were um, going to allow compounded terzepatide to continue while they look further into the shortage. And so the date was like November 21st that they were talking about that they would come back and report and the lawsuit would, you know, get started again if it needed to. And um, so that's sort of what we heard at first, but there was a lot of confusion based on if that applied to 503B pharmacies and if it also applied to 503A, like the 503A were kind of like, we don't know what we're supposed to do. Because if you don't know the difference, 503A fill specific prescriptions for individuals and 503B mass produce a, a thing for like hospitals and nursing homes and, and all of that. They're able to mass produce, whereas 503A are only supposed to be filling per person per prescription. Um, so the FDA actually clarified, they sent out some new guidelines yesterday, basically saying that during this period from now until November 21st, they are treating everybody as equal. So the rule or the guidelines or what's allowed applies to all of the compounding pharmacies, not just 503B or 503A or whatever. So it really clarified. And I think, um, that helped out a lot of telehealth companies, a lot of pharmacies be able to figure out what, I mean, it's like whiplash, like we're going one way and then the other, and then the FDA says this, and then they, they go back and they say, oh no, never mind, just kidding. We're not fully removing it yet. You still can make it. Um, there's a lot of whiplash going on. And so these new guidelines really clarified that for 503A pharmacies. So Hallandale had actually, which they're a 503B, but they had actually stopped compounding terzepatide and I have noticed as of lately that they have it's back being offered um and they are shipping terzepatide again so that's an amazing little update there as well so most telehealth companies that are still in the game that have not pulled the plug on it should have figured it out at this point again orderly has been great um got my prescription it was a little slower than normal but I did end up getting it um, the last thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about was I did another weigh in. So if you saw my last update, I did, um, weigh in right after we had gone on our little vacation to the Great Wolf Lodge and I weighed 160, it was like 166, it was like 165 point something. Um, but like 166 and that is on the higher end for me of my maintenance. I'm usually anywhere from like 163 to 167 ish. Um, and that is the higher end for me. And so I decided that I was going to give it a couple of days and weigh in again so that I could see if all of that sort of bloat or whatever flushed out of my system. And it did. So I weighed this morning and I weighed 164 pounds. So I lost two pounds in just sort of bloat and water retention and all of that, um, over the course of the last, I guess it was three, three to four days. Um, I've lost that weight. So I'm happy about that. I'm back to my sort of normal. I will say that I, I don't stress as much when I gain a couple pounds as I used to, you know, not being on Manjaro or whatever. Um, it, at this point, like at this point in my journey, it just is what it is. I don't stress about anything anymore, which is in my opinion, the most amazing part of Manjaro is that the stress of worrying about like all of the things is, is gone. Like I don't worry about all the little components that go into weight loss and all that anymore. I just sort of uh, let it happen with the tool of the medicine. So, um, yeah, that's my little update. I'm back down to my normal sort of maintenance level weight. And I also wanted to update last thing on the little like blood sugar issue. So I did end up, um, having a zoom call with my doctor because he was a little bit concerned and he wanted to have a little bit more, um, like insight into 
what happened. And so I told him like the whole story and he did agree that it was most likely a blood sugar issue with the heat up there and the increased activity going up and down 15 flights of stairs and all of that. So heed my warning y'all make sure you eat your food. It is so important to make sure that we eat and we monitor our blood sugar levels, especially if you're somebody who is not a diabetic, who is on this medicine, because, um, it does, you know, you do have that effect of the medicine that it's supposed to keep your blood sugar lower. And if you don't need that, then it can accidentally bring it too, too low. So yeah. Okay. So I think that's my little update for today. I wanted to touch on those few things. I wanted to talk about the medicine before I forgot all about it because y'all know how I am. Um, I am, I did also want to share with you guys, which I think this is, um, could be really, really beneficial to a lot of us in this community is this book that I'm currently reading. So a friend of mine actually gave this to me. Um, it's actually my best friend's husband who has become like, he is like probably the most, the best adult I've ever met to carry a conversation, to have like a really insightful conversation. He's just amazing. And so he gave me this book because he thought that I would enjoy it. And it's called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by Mark Comer. Um, and essentially it, it covers like why we feel the need to hurry and to rush through things and to rush through life and to be somewhere in life where we're not supposed to be and how we can combat that through tools and all of the things. He's actually a therapist, this, this friend of mine. Um, so the, the thing says how to stay emotionally healthy and spiritually alive in the chaos of a modern world. Um, and this is, um, you know, slightly religious based, I would say, but it's not so much so that somebody who, um, has no religious affiliation would be like turned off. I don't think I don't have a, a ton of religious affiliation and it doesn't bother me. Like I have, um, a more like morally correct view on life versus like super, super religious. So anyway, this is really good. I've really been enjoying this so far and I wanted to mention this to you guys because I feel like a lot of you would benefit from this as well. Um, so yeah, that's my little update for today. I have some good videos coming next week. Like I said, we're going to be talking about a new study that came out. Um, we're going to be talking about my two years on Manjaro. We're going to be talking about all kinds of things. So make sure you subscribe and stick around. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday. Have a great day guys. Bye.